In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint the Necron Doomstalker for your games of Warhammer 40,000. I'll be showing you how you can approach painting the different colours of metal, using different techniques and how you can shade and highlight them. And so you can follow along, this is going to be an easy to follow step by step guide, showing you everything you'll need to know, so by the end of this tutorial, you'll have the confidence and knowledge to get your own Necron Doomstalker painted. And if you stick around until the end, I'll show you how we can paint all those glowy orbs and tubes. Welcome to Tabletop Ready, my name's Michael and I want to show you in this video how we can paint all those different coloured metals and our Doomstalker and also how we can approach building and painting larger miniatures. All of the paint and brushes I use throughout this tutorial will be shown on the screen as I use them and they'll also be listed in the description along with any hobby equipment I think you'll find useful with affiliate links to where you can buy them. And before we get started, I want to say a massive thank you to all the amazing people who've made this tutorial possible with their continued support, it really means a lot. As well, if you enjoy my content here on Tabletop Ready, then let me know by clicking that like button or leave me a comment. I love reading them and hearing about your own hobby. The Necrons are an interesting faction to paint because painting metals can be really quick just using some shades and a dry brush. But I want to see how we can improve our metal painting skills in this tutorial and hopefully achieve something more impactful. To help make our Doomstalker easier to paint, I've chosen to build it in sub-assemblies. This is going to let us get into those places that would normally be difficult to get to and this also makes painting our larger miniatures more manageable and less daunting to paint. And before we get started, I've undercoated my Doomstalker as well with lead boucher, which is going to help when it comes to painting all those metallic colours. If you need help getting your miniatures ready for painting, I do have a dedicated video on the channel showing you how. And through this tutorial, I'll be showing you all the techniques and steps that you'll need to get your Doomstalker painted, and to make it easier to follow along with, I've split the tutorial up into different chapters. And now that we have our Doomstalker built and undercoated, we're now ready to get started. In this first part of the tutorial, I want to start with the very basics of applying paint to our miniatures. This is often overlooked, but it helps to create a good foundation for the other techniques we use later. The best place to start when painting our miniatures is to get all your base colours painted first. This lets us spend time choosing what colours we want and painting becomes less overwhelming as we've created a great starting point to work from. We're painting our Doomstalker in the colours of the Zarakhan Dynasty, so let's start with our main colour first using Rune Lord Brass. And so we achieve best results, we always want to make sure to thin our paints and I find an equal amount of water does the trick. As well I like to remove excess paint from the brush on some paper towel first which helps give us more control over how much paint is deposited. And when we're painting we want to keep our brush moving and avoid going over any area we've already painted to prevent creating any unwanted texture whilst the paint is still drying. Then once you're done, because we thinned our paint it won't have covered so well, so we will need to paint another layer using the same process. Painting in multiple thin layers this way means we can get a strong base colour without losing any details. We just need to make sure each layer has fully dried first before applying another one. It's really important that we build up to a solid base colour first because any shading and highlighting we do after this will contrast better and make more of an impact. The next areas and details we're painting are all the more functional metals you would find on weapons and the gizmos around the miniature. For this we want to use lead boucher, even though we use the lead boucher undercoat. This is because the colour you get from the spray doesn't always match the colour we get from the pot. This is also going to give us the colour we actually want and gives us the opportunity to cover up any areas we may have missed with the spray as well. Now that we've had some practice painting and applying our paint, we can work on getting the rest of our base colours painted. The next areas we're going to be working on are the darker areas of metal using an equal mix of Iron Warriors and a bad and Black. Then for these lighter brass areas you see on the head and the shoulder plates, we want to use Canoptec Alloy. For the more interesting purple tinted metal on the lower legs, we want to mix an equal amount of Iron Warriors and Barracknar Burgundy. And for our final base colour for the black weapon casings and areas around our glowy orbs, we're using a bad and black, and we'll leave the green glowy areas for later. We're starting with getting all of our base colours painted first because it's a great place to start for any new painters and beginners. Not only does it let us practice those basics, but also gives us experience with our brush. 
One of the other reasons is a great idea to work on getting our base colours painted first as if we make any mistakes or are a little messy. This is so we can spend time neatening everything up before we start doing anything more complex. We've now gotten all of our base colours painted, making sure we've also tidied up any messy areas and mistakes. This gives us a great foundation to start learning and using other techniques. In this section of the tutorial, I want to show you the different steps and techniques to making our miniatures stand out more. Even though we have all of our base colours painted, our Doomstalker is looking pretty flat. So let's see how we can create definition and bring out those details with some shades and highlights. Let's start with our main dynasty colour and give these areas a wash using Zerif and Sapia. When doing a wash we want to use enough to cover an area comfortably so we don't get too much pooling in areas we don't want it to. If you do see this happening then we can remove excess we don't want using our brush. And once the shade has dried you'll see how it's helped to bring out all those details. Another way to bring out the details and make them stand out even more is to do a recess shade which is going to deepen those recessed areas. For this we want to use right clean flesh shade and apply this directly into recesses and around details where we want to create our definition. Doing a recess shade is a more controlled way of creating definition than an all over wash and can be used instead so we don't affect any base colours we may have already painted. There's no one way of creating definition on our miniatures so it's always worth spending some time thinking about the techniques and methods we want to use depending on the areas and features we're working with. We can also do a recess shade using our paints. Here I'm using Moonlord Brass to recess shade our lighter brass details. When it comes to creating our definition for the rest of the Doomstalker, we can continue to use different shades. For the darker metals, we can use Norn Oil. For the more functional metals, we paint a lead belcher, let's use our Grax Earthshade. And finally for the lower legs, let's get fancy and mix together an equal amount of right flesh shade and Druky Violet. And when that's dried, we're now done working on creating our definition, and you should see how it's helped to bring out all of our details so we can see them better. Something else we can do with our shades is to add some age and character to our ancient Necron metals. By applying this again, but this time more intentionally to areas. We're using our Zerif and Sapia for the main body and Agrax Earth Shade for the functional metals. Let's apply this to sections of panels we want to create our interests and we can even use reference whilst painting if we need a little extra help deciding how things should look. To strengthen the colour even more you can apply this multiple times just making sure each layer is fully dry first before applying it again. We can now move on and talk about highlighting so we can better see all those edges and raise details. I want to use this section of the tutorial to show you how we can highlight and the different kinds of highlights we can do to make our miniatures look even better. The idea behind highlighting is to bring out any edges, areas and raise details to draw our attention to them and to make these features stand out more. The most prominent way of highlighting and the one we most associate with it is the line highlight and it's this highlight that we're going to be focusing on. For this technique it's a great idea to have a brush you vibe with and that you like to use and I would keep it separate so it's always up for the task when needed. Again we want to thin our paint and remove any excess on some paper towel first which is going to stop those thick blobby lines. We're going to work on highlighting our main brass colour first and for this we want to use Canoptac Alloy. To do this just take your time painting thin lines on any edges and around details to bring our attention to them. To make this easier we can angle our brush against an edge and run it along the edge to create the highlight. For the areas we can't do this then we just need to take our time painting thin lines where we want our highlights. And when you're done highlighting these areas you'll see how it's helped to bring out the shape and details around our miniature. The other way of highlighting our miniatures is to do a dry brush. This is a much quicker way of highlighting but it can make things look a lot messier. For our metals though it can give us a more burnished metal. When dry brushing, you want to take some of the paint from the pot. Here I'm using Stormhouse Silver and we want to work the paint into bristles before removing as much as we can on the paper towel. The next thing is to move our brush rapidly across details, which means paint is only deposited on edges and raised details without getting paint in those shallow areas and recesses. We want to do a dry brush with our Stormhouse Silver for both the lighter brass colour and also the more oily functional metals on weapons. 
When you're done, we can move on to highlighting other areas starting with the darker metal using Iron Hand Steel. After that we can use our Iron Hand Steel again to highlight the purple tinted metal of the lower legs. For me, highlighting is one of the most important techniques to really practice and get good at, because not only does it help to improve the look of our miniatures, but also helps to improve our brush control and hand-eye coordination, making us better miniature painters overall. When it comes to highlighting our black gun casings, we can achieve an even nicer look with different kinds of highlights. Let's start by cleaning up these areas with a bad and black first of all if you need to. We're then going to do our first highlight, which is called a chunky highlight using Dark Reaper. This highlight wants to be quite a thick line, so we can still see it once we painted our finer highlights after this. Spend some time painting this highlight along any edges, as well as on any raised details and areas. And once you're finished, you should see how it's helped to bring out the shape and details of the armour. Our next highlight is called an edge highlight, and we're using Thunderhawk Blue, and this is the same as what we've already done with our brass metal, painting thin lines to really bring out any edges. Let's continue highlighting with a finer highlight using Fenris in Grey. This highlight is used to emphasise any areas and edges we want to be more prominent and eye catching. Then the last highlight we can do is a spot highlight, using Blue Horror to paint little dots on all the corners of the armour where light would be more focused. And once you're done painting all your highlights, you'll be able to see what a difference is made to our miniature. If you need a little extra help with your highlights, I do have a dedicated video going into more detail and some of the things I found really helped me to improve. I know highlighting can seem like a really daunting task, but I believe it's a very achievable skill with enough practice. And also, we need to be okay with not being very good at it to start with, and it's going to take time before we get really good at it. We've now gone through creating definition and highlighting our miniatures, which means we should now be ready to do the more fun glowy green orbs and tubes. In this final section, I want to show you how we can paint these green orbs and tubes giving the Necrons their iconic look. Let's start by painting any area and orbs we want this effect first with Warpstone Glow for our base colour. I now want to talk about one of my favourite techniques, which is glazing, and it's going to help us achieve that smooth transition between colours. Let's use Moot Green next, and to make this a glaze, we want to thin it down with twice the amount of water, making it more transparent. This is going to allow more of that colour underneath to come through, helping to create that smooth transition between colours. When using a glaze, we want to apply in even thin layers and work the pigment towards the centre of any orb where we want the colour to be strongest. And we can build up this colour by glazing with multiple layers as well, making sure each time the glaze is fully dry before applying it again. And so we achieve a really nice smooth gradient, we can use a glaze of the colour we're working from. Here I'm using a Warpstone Glow Glaze and working it in the opposite direction. Let's continue working on our gradient, getting lighter towards the centre next, with an equal mix of Moot Green and Flash Gitch Yellow to create our next glaze. Remembering to use a glaze of the colour underneath to help get a nicer transition. After that we can use a Dawn Yellow Glaze. Let's finish these areas by using Caliban Green and any recesses around our glowy orbs to help them stand out more. Glazing is often seen as a more advanced technique that we should be avoiding until we think we're better miniature painters. But I believe that it's a very achievable skill with enough time and practice, and it's going to allow us to do even more fun things on our miniatures. Now I want to highlight the areas around our orbs, starting with an edge highlight using Warpstone Glow, going straight to a spot highlight painting dots of Moot Green on all the corners. If you want more of a glow and edge around some orbs, we can edge highlight using Moot Green. The last thing to do is to paint any tubes, starting with an equal mix of Wild Flesh and Moot Green, which is going to help separate these details from the other green glowy areas. Once you're done with your base colour, we can do a chunky highlight along the length of the tube using Moot Green. And the last thing to do on our Doomstalker is to paint a thin line along the tube with Dawn Yellow. Getting to paint the Necron Doomstalker has been a great challenge for me, and it's helped me show you how we can improve our metal painting skills and it's also given us a great centrepiece to our collection, so let's see how it turned out. But before we see the reveal, I do want to take a moment to thank Fernando, Charlie Fulton, Leonard Schweiger, Tyler Halcom, Ezekiel, Robert E, Back on 65, Lucky Fives, Jenny Wilkes and Alzi Forbes, 
who have all recently become supporters or has donated to the channel. Thank you so much. And if you enjoy the content here on Tabletop Ready and want to help support the channel as well, you can become a channel member or join my Patreon, which not only helps me create this content, it also gives you access to our Discord, along with access to a lot of other perks for as little as £2 a month. And for every tier, you'll also get tutorials early and be kept up to date with what I'm up to behind the scenes. Our Necron Doomstalker is now finished and I hope I've been able to give you the confidence and knowledge to get your own painted. I've got plenty of other tutorials on the channel to help you get your miniatures painted, including a Necron beginner tutorial, and I've also shown you how to paint some of the different dynasties, so make sure and go and check those out as well. I really enjoy making these videos and I hope you find them useful. If you do then please let me know by leaving a like and let me know in the comments below. As well make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on future content and I'll see you in the next video.